Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, we are in the middle of evaluation of ML estimators and we are going to continue with the Poisson distribution. Okay, we already saw the Bernoulli distribution. Let us now see the Poisson distribution. Okay, all of you remember the Poisson distribution, right? From the PMF of the Poisson distribution, if you find the likelihood of a particular sampling, it is going to be the product of the PMF evaluated at each xi. Okay, so, it is going to be e power minus lambda times lambda power xi divided by xi factorial. Okay, and then uh, the I mean, then you can multiply all these things together, right? So you will have uh, each of these terms. So you see this one by x one factorial, one by x two factorial. Collect all of those together, keep them on the left. Why am I doing that? Because they are not functions of my unknown parameter lambda. Okay, they depend on the sample, but whatever the value of lambda is, these things don't change. They are the same. Okay, so this part is sort of irrelevant for me. Why? Because I mean it does not change anything, it just multiplies every possible value for every lambda, this will be a constant, right? So, it does not depend on lambda, okay? So, this part is irrelevant. In most cases, people will end up ignoring these kind of parts, which are irrelevant to you in your maximization. How did I get the e power minus n lambda? There is e power minus lambda times e power minus lambda minus e power, e power minus lambda n times you are multiplying, so you get e power minus n lambda. Then how did I get this? This lambda power x1, lambda power x2 multiply all of those together, you get this, okay? Is that okay? So, this part is irrelevant, I can drop it, then I have e power minus n lambda, and lambda. So, only the function of the parameters matter to me. So, only those parts are relevant to me, I have to maximize only that part of the likelihood function. The remaining part just the same, whatever may be lambda remains the same, you do not have to bother with it, okay? So, now, I am ready to maximize. So, notice, uh, I have, first of all, I have taken log, Okay, so, I have dropped this guy, this guy is irrelevant, drop it, here to here I have taken log. Okay. So, when you take log, you will get x1 plus x2 plus xn times log lambda minus n lambda. Okay, so, e power minus n lambda log is minus n lambda. Look at how simple the likelihood function finally became when you want to maximize. Okay. My lambda star is just argument max over lambda of this expression. So, how do I get lambda star equals this? I have to differentiate and equate to 0. So, if I take this guy and differentiate, I am going to get x1. Remember, x1 to xn is just a constant. Log lambda will be 1 by lambda and minus n lambda derivative is just n equal to 0. You solve this, you get this. Okay, lambda star is x1 plus x2 plus xn divided by n. So, we know lambda is also the mean of the Poisson, right? And the method of moments estimator also gives us the same sample mean. So, the sample mean, okay, I put p hat here, so that is wrong. Sorry about that. It is lambda hat ml is the sample mean. It is not very surprising because lambda is the sample mean for the Poisson distribution. And same as method of moments estimator, right? It is an interesting observation that for Poisson, it also works out quite simple. But you notice the little bit of an algebraic manipulation here. If, if, if you are a little confused by that, it can take some time for you to understand it, but it was actually a relatively simple procedure. Just take that distribution, multiply it out, identify the parts that depend on lambda, throw away the parts that do not depend on lambda, then take log, okay? You get a very simple function and you maximize it. Differentiate and equate to 0, you get the uh, uh, maximum uh, argument of the maximum and that gives you the estimator directly, right? So, replace the small x with the capital X, you get your estimator. So, this is the recipe, okay? So, any mathematical problem solving, when you have a clear recipe, it is actually very easy, right? Because you have a recipe. When you do not have a recipe, you have to think about what to do, etc. But when you have a recipe, you just plug in and solve. So, this recipe is an important skill that you have to pick up in this course, okay? Given a distribution with some unknown parameters, how do you try and get to the maximum likelihood estimator? So, we will see a quite a few examples, it's interesting simple examples like this, you should be able to definitely get to a closed form answer, okay? The next thing we will see is the normal distribution. Here we have two parameters. So, first time we are going to see two parameters. We will see the method is easy enough, but still there are two parameters, it can be a bit unsettling. Let us get started. Again, the recipe is exactly the same. I am not going to deviate from the recipe at all, okay? So, the exact same recipe every single time. Okay. The likelihood product of the density function of the normal distribution evaluated at every sample. I forgot to put the x i here. It is very, very important. 
ok. So, now notice the simplification here I have done a little bit of simplification I have grouped all this 1 by root 2 pi sigma together and raised it to the power n and then e power minus multiplying I have just grouped all of those guys together and put minus 1 by 2 sigma square summation i equals 1 to n x i minus mu whole square ok. So, why do I do this I mean this just gives me a compact expression and you see this is the same as that there is no difference here and if you have not seen these kind of things before it might look a little new to you but I mean it is simple enough right. So, you get e power minus summation it is not too bad ok. What is the next step? It is the maximization when you do maximization you are going to throw away the irrelevant part keep only the functions of uh, the unknowns mu and sigma in your hand then take log right you take log you get the function that you have to maximize. So, that is all I have done here ok. So, here what happens is uh, the, the relevant part of the function see is 1 by root 2 pi is can be ignored. <coughs> so, this part I will ignore and then when I take log notice what happens log I will get minus 1 by 2 sigma square summation x i minus mu whole square i equals 1 to n ok. And then you have a 1 by sigma power n. So, that is minus n log sigma ok. So, I have a minus and a minus then I need to maximize. Maximization of a minus of something is the same as minimization of positive version of that ok. Remember this is a negative quantity right. So, negative quantity when you want to maximize you have to minimize the absolute value right. So, that is what I am doing here. So, I have thrown away the minus ok. The minus became plus right. The minus became plus and the maximum became minimum ok. So, instead of maximizing I am going to be minimizing but all these things are minor things anyway we are going to differentiate and equate to 0 right. So, that is what we are doing but just some minor manipulation to make your work a bit easier ok. So, if you do not care about that you can just keep the neg negative sign you can just keep the minus minus sign and keep max here ok. So, it is the same as arg max mu sigma minus 1 by 2 sigma square summation i equals 1 to n x i minus mu whole square minus n log sigma. It is the same as that both of these are equal ok. So, that is the claim uh, that I am making it ok. Again I mean every step I hope you agree with me it is quite simple the recipe is uh, clean enough to follow. Now, comes the derivative ok. So, I am not going to do the derivative in the lecture I will leave it as an exercise but hopefully you see how to do the derivative right. So, first thing for this guy you do differentiate with respect to mu alone you know treat sigma as a constant ok. So, if you treat sigma as a constant this part will go away right and then here also when this is a constant it does not really matter in this case and then you have to just multi do the derivative with respect to this ok and uh, you will see how the derivative will work right. So, if you want you can expand this as x i squared minus 2 mu x i plus mu squared. If you differentiate you are going to get minus 2 x i plus 2 mu ok and then you will add it up over all i and equate it to 0 you will end up getting mu star equals x 1 plus x n divided by n ok. So, this is an exercise uh, uh, look at how you will do it. And for this guy you will differentiate with respect to mu or with respect to sigma and treat mu as a constant. Okay, so, this is something that you can do. So, I cannot uh, ignore this guy, but I can ignore this one this whole thing has become a constant. So, if I differentiate that will just come out and it will be there etcetera. So, I am not going to go into details of this derivative ok. You can you can go through and check it yourself with uh, simple enough differentiation you will get sigma squared ml to be this big expression. So, basically this this whole expression divided by this n will come ok. So, you can check it out ok. So, these are again just blindly follow the recipe and we got very intuitive clear answers right. So, because this is the sample mean this is almost the sample variance right. So, sample variance the only difference in the sample variance and this is the sample variance was divided by n minus 1 in this case it is divided by n minor difference, but both are sample mean and sample variance natural answers 
that we got by maximizing likelihood okay and also this sort of agrees with uh, agrees with uh, MME also right method of moments estimation also okay in some sense uh, at least this part agrees with MME right let me not say everything agrees so this part agrees with MME same as MME okay for this guy uh, you know it's it's uh, you can look into it and see see how the differences between this and the MME are for uh, knowing mean and variance okay i think it's the same same thing that you will get for that also okay so both the mean and the variance will agree with the mme so you can check for yourself that this also agrees okay so we see we've seen that for the poisson distribution and normal distribution the recipe for following and calculating the likelihood uh, ml estimator is quite simple you just put it in plug it in you derive it to differentiation equal to zero and you get uh, things that agree with the sample mean Okay, but you know the situation can get uh, quickly complicated. So I'm going to do a few more examples, and you'll see in the other examples things will go a little bit different. Okay, uh, so let me make a few quick observations before proceeding further. The first observation is the ML estimation is very, very, very popular. It's a good idea in most cases. It gives very reasonable results. Okay, it's also appealing in many ways, right? It sort of maximizes the probability that you see a particular sample. Uh, some negative points people will say you need to know the distribution. Maybe that's a limitation, but one can overcome that and see. For instance, uh, I want to I tell you a couple of things. First thing is, even though in many of these cases, we started with the distribution and derived the likelihood estimator, the final estimator is just a function of the samples, right? So whatever distribution you use, you will get some estimator and then after that you can just work with the estimator okay you, you I mean even though you made one assumption that assumption is uh, is not going to show up too much beyond uh, in a simple way in the calculation okay so so think about what that means so if you change the change the distribution you're going to get a different estimator in some cases the estimator just may just be the sample mean in which case it doesn't matter what the distribution is you'll get the same thing and on all these things uh, make it very very interesting you know how does it depend on the distribution does it change from the distribution the other all these are interesting things that people study okay so one of the other negatives some people might say is the actual estimator to derive it you need some calculus okay and that's you know it's unavoidable you need to use it uh, it's hopefully i've convinced you that many of the examples need very simple calculus maybe the normal distribution needs a little bit more than what uh, you might consider simple but even that i think once you get used to it you'll see it's quite simple okay so there's lots of questions right so uh, i mean how do uh, how do they look in general are they always going to be equal to sample mean and things like that is it similar to mme different from mme how will you compare ml and mme okay the method of moments estimator and ml estimator how do you compare the two of them okay these are all very interesting questions let's try and answer them in the subsequent lectures